penalty. No, no, it's it's an out of bounds. Falls in play. Early takes it again. Plus Steve Early to make his exit from Cambridge in a blaze of glory. The Americans have a word for him. Colossal. Right over. The final moments of the Oxford versus Cambridge rugger match broadcast to the entire British Empire. The score is not for Oxford and not for Cambridge. After 85 minutes of terrific play by both 15, Cambridge, fighting desperately, has been kept in the going only through the magnificent play of Mr. Stephen Early, the sensational American, who was playing his last game for Cambridge. <laughs> Mr. Stephen Early, three, Oxford, North. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you our departing hero, old Steve, who, spurning civilization, returns to the land of the Red Indians, the galloping buffaloes, the swing bands, the, uh... uh by the way, why are you going, Steve? Duty, honor, tradition, and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Rotten bad form, I'd call it, running off just after downing Oxford, like, like barging off from a dinner party. <laughs> <laughs> Will you miss me? Oh, dreadfully, Steve. Don't go away. I'll be right back. In four years. <laughs> Nice of you, Stephen, to remember me in the midst of your triumph. Not at all, sir. You're sailing tonight, of course. Mm, Queen Mary, Southampton. It'll be lonely without you, son. Uh, four years... Well, we're not going to have a scene, are we? Not two old soldiers like us. Rotten form, really. I'm mean, just a little worried about you, Steve. You're going into a difficult world. I'm wondering how you're going to fit. I'll hold up my answer. You'll find yourself surrounded by 2,000 typical American boys. And uh, you're not a typical American boy. Really? Aren't you forgetting the five generations of earlies who've been West Pointers and the jolly old Mayflower and all that? I'm banking on them heavily. You're going to need them. I promise to keep the early escutcheon forever untarnished. I know you will. Well, uh, that brings us to goodbye, doesn't it? Not goodbye, sir. It's not a while. Goodbye, Steve. The very best. Goodbye, sir. And if, it, if it's not being on military, I'd, I'd like to say that you're my favorite father. I'll overlook the familiarity. <laughs> uh, will you get out of here? Get down anywhere. I see, old boy. Can you direct me to the superintendent? What's that guy over there, Duke? He seems to be the big shot. I uh, beg your pardon. That's English you're speaking, isn't it? It ain't double talk. One likes to be sure, doesn't one? How do you like that guy? Is it English? <laughs> Maybe he's a spy. <laughs> Anderson, Harry, check. Stand over there. I say, old man, am I right to the superintendent? What? I'm instructed to report to the superintendent of the United States Military Academy. What do you think those men are waiting for? Home relief? <laughs> Early. Stephen. Check. Stand over there. Next. Well, Frank. Check. Stand over there. Well, I'd like to arrange for a batman to bring my kid along. A what? To do what? A batman. A porter. To carry my luggage. You'll have to carry your own bag, son. This is the army. Not all of it, I hope. <laughs> well, 
here we are. In a good, substantial-looking place. Oh, Alan, it looks so grim. Huh? Not a bit home-like. I just know that Sonny will be homesick or something. I will not. No matter what anybody tells you, we saw it first. Somebody may beat us to it. Come on. Say, Sonny, where'll I find it? <laughs> Look, where'll I find the general? I want to talk to him about Sonny. As members of the, shall we say, reception committee, in charge of receiving the incoming class, sir, we'd be very glad to have you talk to us about Sonny. Well, now, that's right nice of you boys, isn't it, Mother? Oh, yes, I think it's awfully nice of you to take such an interest in Sonny. Oh, it's a pleasure, ma'am. You just leave Sonny to us. Oh, gee, fella, thanks. Pick up your bag, Sonny. Glad to have seen you, sir. Left face! Goodbye, Ma. Goodbye, Dad. Goodbye, Sonny. Goodbye, dear. Oh, I'm so glad he's met such nice boys. Yeah. Why don't you get a brace, Mr. Dumbgard? Just a... I straight ahead. Chain that back. I straight her. Let me tell. Hey, hey. Suck in those stomachs. Pull on those chin. Brace those shoulders. Stand up, you question marks. Mr. Strong... This is Sonny. Hello, fellas. Get in ranks. But Sonny belongs to us. You're welcome to him. Had to happen, I suppose. There's a Sonny in every fleet class. Isn't he beautiful? I dislike to disarrange such a perfect picture, Mr. Raines. But the hat. Yes, I thought so, too. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me... You know, I never was quite sure about that blonde, Mr. Raines. Blondes are indeed fickle, Mr. Grady. She loves me not. Thank you, Mr. Strong. Roll up those trousers. Take off that horse blanket. What? Climb out of that coat. Ah, an athlete. Uh, yes, sir. Football? Yes, sir. I'll bet you were captain of the team. Yes, sir. He scored all the touchdowns. I'd say he's a jolly good football player. How did you get in here? Quite easily, really. Presidential appointment. Is that so? Where'd you get that accent? Perhaps it comes with having spent eight years at school in England. The last two at Cambridge. Cambridge? Yes. A university attended by gentlemen. Maybe you're a football player, too. Oh, quite, sir. I was rather fancied as a scrum half. What? That's in Raga. Raga? My <laughs> word, Mr. Green. <laughs> we'll have to look into this. <laughs> Wipe those silly smirks off your face. Is there anything else you do? Oh, yes. I swim, golf, tennis, row, uh, cricket, soccer. Eat crickets, Mr. Grady. Can you bake a cake? I forgot to mention, sir, like a box. You mean fight for the hands? Quite. I suppose you're an expert at that, too. I doubt if I should ever have the opportunity to prove to you personally my pugilistic expertness. Really? Why not, Mr. Liney? Because of those chevrons, sir. You probably sleep in them. I have a hunch you're not going to last long around here, Mr. Liney. I've seen plebes like you before. A little too high class for this place. Doing the army a favor. And a little too smart, too, if you get what I mean. But while you are here, it's going to be a pleasure for me to have you on the Beast Squad. Thank you, sir. I'm looking forward to it. Before I assign you men to rooms, I desire to point out a few facts of life. You've been given a copy of Bugle Notes, which is a manual governing the conduct of plebes. From it, you will learn that no plebe is permitted to smoke outside his room. Or appear outside his room without correct uniform. A plebe must ascend and descend stairs two at a time. Plead must enter and leave barracks by the basement door, never by the front door. In fact, Mr. Dumbguard, you know what a plead ranks? Sir, a plead ranks the superintendent's dog, the commandant's cat, the waiters in the mess hall, the hellcats, and all the admirals in the whole darn navy. Where did you learn that? I learned the whole plead manual by heart, sir, before I came here. Right. Face. 
Four. Double time. Hi. Pick up those bags. Duke, what you need is a guy with a strong back and a weak mind. That's me. What I need is an octopus. men will occupy a room. The last three men in this line take this room. You three men take that room. Forward! Double time! Hi! Detail! Home little place, isn't it? So cheery. Uh, we'll get used to it, Duke. Lots of others are before us. Thanks, Hopi, for helping me with my kid. No, I think nothing of it. I was traveling light. Park yourself in that upper bunk, Sonny. Thanks. Say, you, you sort of overdid it with that yearling corporal, didn't you? I thought he was bearing down too hard on that chap, Drew. Say, he was. You know, it may be our solemn duty to adopt that little squirt. You might get lost or something. I was thinking of that myself. Oh, I guess it's fate, or maybe it's the mother instinct in me. My son, you're about to perform your first great sacrifice. Huh? See you later. Gentlemen. I should like to propose a business transaction. I have here a particularly fine specimen of young manhood, sound in wind and limb and guaranteed to be gentle and kind to his mother. I'm going to trade him, free and unencumbered, in return for this. No, 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 don't thank me. I, I just thought that he was more your type. Oh, so long, fellas. I'm sorry, I have to go. Park yourself in that upper bunk, sonny. Well, I got him. Oh, gee, fellas, thanks. My name's West, John West. I'm from Michigan. I'm Steve Early. So, you're going to be my military wife for four years. Not exactly a raving beauty, but a husky-looking wench. Well, I'm Robert Drew. How do you do? I'm going to be your military wife, too. Uh, it's a very beautiful thought, Sonny. But you can never be more than a sister to me. Polygamy isn't done, not even in beast barracks. Gentlemen, meet my grandfather. A most remarkable man. Grandfather, meet the gentleman. How do you do? Pension? Within the next four hours, you will draw articles of uniform equipment from the cadet store. Bedding and utensils necessary to the proper care of your room. You will learn to make a bed, police a room, arrange a locker, and a stand inspection. In addition, you will learn requirements of military courtesy. To salute properly, to dress a line, to do squads right and left, to form a hollow square, to march in column, and to answer calls to formations. And just before retreat tonight, you will be sworn into the military service of the United States. See if you have that memorized, Sonny. My word, what an optimist. All in outside. I think informal introductions are so much nicer, don't you? <laughs> you know, you're the first pleasant thing I've seen all day. If I knew when you pass here, I might drop in like this often. Pick up that mattress, mister. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, immediately, sir. Very sorry, sir. A most charming lady, sir. Must be the Chevron, sir. What's that? Well, sir, if it's not the Chevron, sir, then, sir, we have no explanation. Have we, sir? Particularly poisonous specimen of plea. 
complicated by his suet pudding accent. <laughs> oh, really? What's his name? Plebes don't have names. about to take the oath of service and allegiance, which will make you members of the Corps of Cadets, United States Army. When I pause, at the proper place, each of you will utter his own name aloud. I, Steve Robert, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and bear true allegiance to the national government that I will maintain and defend the sovereignty of the United States, paramount to any and all allegiance. I was just think we're in the army. I'd rather not think about it. I've been through enough the last four hours to be a major general. Remind me of a rest home. It's so different. Aren't you chaps tired? Who, me? Things move pretty fast. I haven't had a chance to think about being tired. Oh, Grandfather warned me it would be like this. Who's the handsome looking gent with all the hardware? Oh, that's my father. I didn't know you were an army brat. Well, I, I'm not exactly. Say, that's a distinguished service cross he's wearing. Yeah. Nothing like having a hero for a father. He was killed in action. Sorry, Jeff. Say, I wonder what the idea is of button on a string. Well, that's your absence card. Every time you go out of the room, you have to show where you are by that little button. Well, suppose you're someplace else when your little button says you're someplace else. You better be where the little button says you are. You're on your honor to be there. And you can't go anywhere else until you come back and change the little button. You see, the honor system here is more than just a name. It's, it's everything. You can get away with an offense against military discipline. But nobody yet has survived an offense against the honor code. You know, the Army enforces the military code. But the code of honor is enforced by your own classmates and by the Corps. Now, let that be a lesson to you. And listen, if they ever catch you with even one red cent in your pocket, it's the firing squad. <laughs> you can't even mention money around here. Gee, fellas, just think, maybe all of them, the greatest back the Army ever had. Or, or a light horse Harry Wilson. Or even Red Cagle lived right in this very room. Gee, aren't we lucky? Say, don't you think we're lucky? Uh, oh, that's army spirit for you.
study with all this going on. Tomorrow we go back into barracks. Academics come next week. I'm brushing up on Euclid. Euclid and I are just like that. Yeah, well, Euclid and I are just like this. Go on, you're just a doughboy, huh? Sure. Doughboy's the backbone of the service. Uh uh. The spirit of the carnival is creeping up on me. <laughs> Adventure romance. The slither of silk, the sizzle of champagne, the lure of lovely ladies. I think I'll go out and get better acquainted with Mr. Strong. Now, look, you, you go after that blonde with Strong, and you'll have half a dozen yearling corporals on your neck. Don't wait up for me, Jack. Yes, I was right. You are beautiful. Ah. You see, I wasn't quite sure. The last time I saw you, you were uh, upside down. Well, what are you thinking? I'm thinking that you're conceited, fresh, a gold brick in an army breast. That's rather an understatement, but let it pass. Your book of clippings must be enormous, Mr. Early. Cuttings is the word. No, I've never gone in for cuttings. It's such a waste of time. Perhaps you need an assistant. You know, to compile the personal history of Steve Early for posterity. Marvelous. I'll see you have a front row seat for all my local performances. Oh, there was uh, one point you failed to cover in your survey. Really? Oh, yes, I have one weakness. Moonlight. Sentiment. Romance. One of my first duties, Mr. Early, will be to protect you against yourself. And for the love of Pete, what happened to you? Oh, it's you. Yes, sir. Strange how I get about it, isn't it? I was fortunate enough to rescue Miss uh, Anne in the confusion. Is that so? Mr. Early was showing me how beautiful the river looks from here. Oh, a beauty lover, eh? Look, Mr. Dumflicket. If I could prove the suspicion I have about you and those lights, I'd... Do you mind? Not at all. Brace, mister. Suppose you just stand there and admire the river until called to quarters. Three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, are you again? Yes, it's me. You guys run like pot on high. All right, swing it back for your takeover. Slumming, aren't you? Coming out to watch the thieves? No, just curiosity. I wanted to see the great early. Why not arrange for a private showing? Oh. All right, come on, come on, get in there and show a little light. Maybe I've had a lot of company. Most of them bow-legged. Well, if you're talking about Mr. Strong, you... Oh, bad news, Strong, we call him. What a shame he has to grow out of being a yearling corporal. He's so happy as he is. Come on, show a little life in there. 48, gang. Come on, let's shoot it. Hey. Fumble. Fumble. There's a nice soft green spot right over there, Mr. Strong. Just the place for a quiet little nut. Fire's going. Come on, gang. You know, it must have been awfully dull for you before I came into your life. 
A blonde island completely surrounded by strongs. What a life. It has its moments. What does a 16-year-old know about moments? 18. 19 tomorrow. I'd never believe it. You don't show your age at all. I didn't know you were an army girl. I'm not exactly... Hey, hey, hey. You want to catch pneumonia? Well, you're looking pretty good shape. How much do you weigh? 175. Feel great. You know, there was a man in the 29 squad who looked just like you. It's Murray. He's hurt. He's just lovely to me. He's going to keep me in perfect shape all week so I can break a leg Saturday. He reminds me of Drew 20 years after. Do you know who he is? Sure, he's Doc. Why is it people like Doc never have second names? Doc's more than a trainer. He's an institution. He was a cadet. Never graduated. He failed academically as a second classman and had to resign. He's been here ever since as a trainer. I often wonder where the army got men like him. How come you're so interested? Maybe it's because he's my father. Johnny, come in. What's the matter with you? That's the third shiny you've had in two weeks. Don't you like yourself anymore? Well, it's my eye, isn't it? I guess I can get a shine if I want to, can't I? Must be rather monotonous. Sure it is. I have to get black eyes so you guys can get touchdowns. Well, somebody's got to be a scrub. Not me. Look, the first team is only as good as the scrubs are. The harder the scrubs fight, the better the first team plays. Yes, but a scrub gets none of the glory, my son. You never heard of a scrub dying for dear old Alma Manny? I believe if you have to get a fractured skull... It's better to have as many people as possible witness your heroism. I remember at Cambridge, I had 125,000 to my broken collarbone. And nearly 200,000 attended my concussion. Yeah, well, an army guy plays just as hard if nobody's watching. Oh, I remember you. Rugger, isn't it? A much more difficult game than American football. Quite, sir. In Rugger, there's no interference in front of the ball carrier. Exactly. So that when a man runs for a touchdown, a try is the word, sir. He runs through the opposing team all by himself. Very well explained, Mr. Strong. And as I remember, you were rather fancied as a crummy half. Scrum half, sir. And doubtless on many occasions scored tries. Oh, on many occasions. You fancy you could run through an army team, Mr. Early. For a good old rousing try. It seemed fairly simple, sir. In football, there are only 11 men on the side. In Raga, there are 15. Please, wait till I get out there. I'll go away. I'll be right back. Oh, gee, Duke, what's the matter with you? You're just in time. I've just been invited to run through an army team. You sure get yourself in some beautiful journey. Those guys out there will murder you. Mr. Rugger, we're waiting. Runner? Oh, quite. The name is Early, sir. Oh, the name is Early. Hey, hey, Early. Hey. Wait a minute, Early. I want to talk to you. Yes, sir? Walk along with me. Mr. Early, I desire to remind you that plebes are not permitted to speak to, escort, or be in the company of ladies without being in correct uniform. And then only with special permission. Do I make myself clear, Mr. Early? Very, sir. Football practice is not the place. And football togs are not the uniform. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. I'll ask Miss Porter not to speak publicly to me again. Mr. Early, you seem to have missed the affection and esteem the entire corps holds for Miss Porter. And for Doc Porter. Oh, not at all, sir. Nor the individual admiration Mr. Strong holds for Miss Porter. I think she's wonderful. It's her birthday today. I'm thinking of giving her a party, a surprise party. On the steps of Grant Hall, I suppose. 
Oh, no, sir. At our house. Tonight. You know, the second house to the right beyond the gym. Don't be silly. Thieves can't visit anyone at night without special permission. Mr. Strong, I'm afraid you're too busy being a yearling corporal. A girl like Anne needs romance. Oh! I'm not through with you yet. I seem to remember, Mr. Early. You once deplored the fact that you couldn't prove to me your pugilistic expertness. Oh, quite, sir. It was the Chevrons, wasn't it, sir? Morning, Mr. Strong. Morning, sir. I think I'll give you an opportunity to prove to me just how good you are. Suppose you follow me, Mr. Early. With pleasure, sir. Does that make you feel better, Mr. Early? Very much, sir. Before you begin the demonstration, I suppose I should tell you. I'm the heavyweight boxing champion of the academy. Really? Material must be very scarce. I didn't think I'd need the chevrons. I wouldn't say that, sir. Surprise party, you said? Yeah, a one-man surprise party. Would you like to send a gift? You go absent from quarters, and there'll be a surprise party waiting for you when you get back. But the chevrons, of course. You said it! I wouldn't go down there if I were you. Strong is giving a little extra instruction on the proper conduct of a plea. Who? Mr. Early. It's about time. Ten hook! going on here? Boxing, sir. Mr. Early and I were warming each other up. The gym is a place for boxing, Mr. Strong. Yes, sir. See that you make use of it in the future. Yes, sir. Hey, Steve, you better stop fussing around. Taps will go in a minute. Oh, don't rush me. There's plenty of time. Well made, taps. Lights out. Twenty-four. All right, sir. Twenty-three. Those the clothes you're going to sleep in? Sure, I'm practicing to be a soldier. Quit clowning, will you? As soon as I give the all right, you're going to have to stay like that all night. Twenty-two. Get a load of the Duke. You might think he was going somewhere. I am. I'm going to call on Miss Porter. It's a birthday. Are you crazy? You mean you're going absent from quarters? You can't do that. Suppose you get caught. Did I ever tell you about my grandfather? The most remarkable man. He was never caught. You better be as smart as your grandfather, or you'll be an area bird instead of a football player. Remember, Strong is subdivision inspector tonight. That's all right. I told him I was going. That makes it a sporting proposition. Yeah. <laughs> Some fun.
Don't wait up for me. I just love getting presents. I uh, decided to bring the phonograph. I don't sing so well. What are you doing here? It's your birthday, isn't it? Aren't you surprised? Well, I probably should be, but I'm not. I don't think anything the great Ellie could do would surprise me. Ah, now we're beginning to understand each other. I hope my being late didn't dampen the festivities. I was uh, unavoidably detained. Uh, couldn't find the key to the basement door. It must have been quite a dangerous expedition. Oh, it would have been if the enemy had been awake. Napoleon, Alexander the Great, Hannibal. They love danger. All great soldiers love danger. Hannibal, trust the Alps. Early, trust the plane. If you're not careful, you'll be crossing the Hudson on the way home. This is very nice of you. I really didn't expect it, though. Oh. Couldn't someone give you just what I always wanted? It might interest you to know that Mr. Strong gave me that frame. Mr. Strong? Oh, yes, lovely chap. So thoughtful, too. Just the right size to fit in the locker. Uh oh, I believe in fair exchange. I suppose you never thought of what would happen to me if someone should come in here and find you. Us. Of course I have. We announce our engagement immediately. like this, he has to go Romeo on us. I'd like to guzzle him. I've guzzled him four times in the last four minutes. What are you thinking about now? I think you're fresh. I know. Conceded a gold brick and an army brat. Oh, pardon me. Come on. Thank you. Oh, I don't think that you are... Three thousand ways to boil an egg, or what every young girl should know. I'm glad you appointed yourself custodian of my personal history. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it ends right here. You're wrong. It just started. However, I'll see you get plenty more to keep this one company. That makes this nice reading on those long winter nights. I suppose you have it all figured out what you're going to do in the event they catch you and kick you out. Oh, yes. I've decided to let my hair grow in. We'll go back to England. You'll like England. You're doing your best to make me wish I'd never heard of it. I think I'm going to kiss you. Thanks for the warning. Uh-uh. All little girls get kissed on their birthdays. You expecting someone? No, but I thought you might be. What, at this time of night? That's father. Oh, you're, you're back early. Early? Oh, what is I mean, soon. Soon? How long did you think it would take me to drive the Major and his wife home? Well, I, I was hoping that it was... Hey, you've had too much excitement for one day, young lady. What you need is bed. You're missing your beauty sleep. But, uh... Ah, that's what I like. Plenty of fresh air. Good night, darling. Happy birthday. You'll never know.
me. As I was saying, ah, romance. Probably the sons and daughters of I Will Arise wanting their back dues. Something the matter? What's her name? I know a good lawyer. It isn't exactly a surprise to me. I've been expecting it. I knew she couldn't make it. What are you going to do? The only thing I can do. Resign. Go home. Oh, you can't do that. We're playing Harvard Saturday. Don't worry. You'll win without me. You mean to say you're going to walk out of here and resign without even getting in touch with your mother? You don't know my mother, Steve. She isn't the kind to holler for help. All our lives, mothers fixed things, so I came first. It wasn't easy because we didn't have much. She kept me in school just because she knew how much it meant to me to, to come here. I guess I've been a little selfish. But, well, I thought I could make it up to her after I graduated. I can't wait now. Mother's got to come first. How would she need to pull her through? Almost a thousand bucks. You mean to tell me you're going to give up everything you've worked so hard to get for a silly thousand dollars? A thousand dollars isn't silly, Steve, to a guy that's never had more than ten bucks at one time in his whole life. I think it's silly. I know lots of people who have a thousand dollars. I know lots of people who haven't. I think you're silly. Suppose you do resign, and then you find out that this, this letter's a false alarm. Sure. Sure, Steve is right. If you resign, you're through. You'll make a bomb, Second Lieutenant, ready to give up before you even know the strength of the enemy. Will you promise me something? Will you, will you send your mother a telegram? She'll let you know the truth. Sure, and I can get that money for my dad just like that. Oh, thanks, Bob, but I couldn't accept it. Listen, I'll tell you what we'll do. Right after recall this afternoon, we'll send your mother a telegram. You'll get an answer in the morning, and if she says she needs you, well, Sonny and I will help you resign. Is that common sense? You said it. Well, all right, I'll, I'll wire her this afternoon. Brace those shoulders. Pull in those chins. Suck in those stomachs. Stand up, you question marks. <laughs> uh, I'm 
might as well make a phone call while I'm here. I want to speak to Mr. Hayes, National City Bank, New York. Reverse charges, please. Ask a ride out if you have to come home. Mr. Hayes, I want you to wire me $1,020 to Western Union, Highland Falls, New York, right away. You aren't in uh, difficulty, are you, Stephen? Oh, no, not at all. I just want to make a little business investment. And I don't want any of the bank's advice. <laughs> all right, I'll take care of it immediately, Stephen. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Well, did you send it? Yeah. It's gone. Gee, Steve, you're not going to pull that stunt again, are you? Stunt? Steve, why don't you act grown up? This may be my last night. The cavalier in me demands action. Every tacking cadet officer in the place is laying for you. Did I ever tell you about my grandfather? Oh. I ought to clip you right on the jaw and put you to bed. Look, Steve, nobody's worth the chances you're taking. Wrong again, Sonny. I know somebody who's worth it. Oh, and don't wait up for me. Can you identify yourself, Mr. Early? Oh, certainly. Give you a check. It's too late to pay in cash. I don't want the money. I want you to transfer it to the address on his telegram. Nothing, really. Just a few things I keep in town uh, for emergencies. Young lady, what are you doing out of this time of night? Someone else is having a birthday, I suppose. Mm. No, not exactly. Neon Steve, they call me. It seems to be my lot to go around spreading happiness and light. Unselfish, unspoiled, untouched by human hands. Well, almost untouched. Unselfish? I don't suppose you ever had a thought for anyone else but yourself in your whole life. Oh, I didn't, eh? But just remember, if I get busted in math this month, it's your fault. And who's to blame for your committing a dismissal offense at this time of night? What's the matter? Only 11 o'clock. It wouldn't be funny if you're just making a fool of yourself. But when you're making fools of men who trust you and believe in you, that's tragic. You're not fit to know those men. You laugh at them just as you laugh at me. Oh, you're on there. Most of the time I'm laughing at myself. You have a queer sense of humor. Your classmates are playing Harvard Saturday and they need you to win. And you betray their trust. I hope they catch you. I hope they kick you out. That probably would throw you into stitches. If you can uh, climb a wall, I'll see you home. No, thanks. I'm probably mistaken, but I just saw a young chap with a girl in front of the Western Union office who was Mr. Early or his double. I'll check that early at once, sir. me. <laughs> I 
nothing like a brisk walk in the night air to get rid of that sleepy feeling. Good evening, Mr. Early. Hope you've had an enjoyable outing. Well, quite uh, nice of you to wait up for me. The pleasure was all mine. You know, I was just sitting here wondering what your grandfather would do at a time like this. Social engagement, I presume? Not at all. Business. It must have been very important business. Very. Mr. Early, were you or were you not in front of the Western Union office in Highland Falls at approximately 11 o'clock tonight? No, sir. You wish to change that statement, Mr. Early? No, sir. It's too bad you won't be playing against Harvard Saturday. You probably would have been sensational. Thank you, sir. I'm sure I would have been. I've seen a lot of guys like you. Guys who could dish it out beautifully. There was only one trouble with them. They never learned how to take it. I hope you can take it, Mr. Early. In big doses. I'll be looking forward to the experiment, sir. Good night, Mr. Early. Good night, sir. I'm sorry I didn't slug you. Gee, what are you going to do now? Me? I'm going to bed it. Bed? Sure. Haven't you heard? There's nothing like a good night's sleep. Look at you two first. One would think that you were going in front of the honor committee. What are you going to tell him? Oh, I think I'll plead um, self-defense. Yeah, that's just the trouble. You haven't got a defense. Maybe I can pick one up on the way over. Here's a telegram for you, Mr. West. Thank you, sir. Well, go ahead. Open it. What did she say? Sorry you were alarmed. No cause for worry. It's all right. Everything's all right. Oh, <laughs> yes, I told you that yesterday. Oh, go on, you know, Swami. You couldn't know she could fix it up. Then maybe she got the money from the bank. Oh, sure. Banks are the nicest people. Oh, gee, that's <laughs> well. Hey, Duke. You know, all we got to worry about now is you. Mr. Early, do you desire to make a statement in your defense? No, sir. Mr. Early, you have been reported for uttering a falsehood in answer to a question in the line of duty in violation of the honor code. To you, Mr. Early, the honor code may seem childish, but to the men who have worn the uniform of the Corps, from the generals of the Army to the lowliest plebe goat, it represents the cornerstone and strength of the United States Army. There has never been a place for a liar in this institution. Honesty is not a surface quality, Mr. Early. We know that since your entrance here, you have not been honest with the Corps, your classmates, or yourself. Ordinarily, Mr. Early, the disposal of a case such as yours would not be difficult. This honor committee, made up of your fellow cadets, would report its findings to the superintendent of the academy. You would then be tried by the proper authority and dismissed from the Corps. Your father is an officer and a gentleman in the highest sense of the word. We would like to spare him and those members of your family who preceded you here the shame which must follow your official disgrace. Mr. Early, the committee suggests that you resign. If I do not choose to resign? We are sure such a choice would be most unfortunate. I dislike to inflict my presence upon you, gentlemen. But as you reminded me, each generation of my family has graduated a son from this institution. I cannot bring myself to break such a tradition. Very well, Mr. Early. You may go. Good afternoon, gentlemen.
Watkins and Jones, report to the guardhouse. Look at him out there, clowning. He doesn't fool me. It may look like clowning, but Steve wouldn't have missed this game for a million bucks. Gee, it won't even sound like a football game without Steve. Sixty-six hours extra duty. Let's see, he can walk two off on Wednesday, two off on Saturday. That's four hours a week. Four to six... Oh, gee, that's an awful lot of walking. Bob, while you were outside the room just now, they passed the word along. Steve is silent. Oh, no, they can't do that. Not to Steve. Four years inside these walls, having to live among 2,000 men who won't speak to him. Or, or even admit that he exists. You mean we have to start talking to him, too? That's for us to decide. As his roommates, we can talk to him. Well, I don't have to decide anything. I'll talk to him. Yeah, same here. Better get ready for the game. Hey, brothers, remember Hobbs is wearing crimson jerseys. Don't forget on that 17B play. Mouse trap the tackle and. Hey, I've got a great idea for you. When you. Burn up over a little thing like a football game. Maybe it's a lot of little things. Oh, nobody's going to talk to me for the next three and a half years. Isn't that just ducky? Well, that's no punishment. It's been awfully tough trying to talk to a bunch of yokels whose conversation was limited to G and Hall before they came here. Well, what are you waiting for? Are you going to move or shall I? Move? Sure. You can't live with a guy who has military B.O., Steve, we kind of like it here. Sure. Southern exposure and everything. It's not so easy to divorce your wife. Two wives. Well, uh, it's okay with me, but I think you're asking for a lot of grief. Look, Steve, you, you, you know we wouldn't go back to you. suppose you guys don't believe in Santa Claus. You'll have an awful time getting by the sentries. Christmas comes but once a year. And when it comes, it means only the 25th of December to the plebes. Back in London, the colonel is sitting in solemn grandeur in front of the Yule log, a hot toddy in his hand. I cabled him Christmas greeting number 12A. He'll like that. This is the first time I've ever been away from home on Christmas. Back there, everything is white snow and green pine trees. And the air, when you breathe it, sort of explodes inside of you. 
My mother makes the best turkey dressing you ever stuck a fork into. Well, if Christmas proceeds according to regulations, you can stick that fork into a nice pan of slum and hope for the best. Just a couple of pessimists. The trouble with you fellas is you don't believe in Santa Claus. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no. Oh, no, fellas, what are you going to do to me? Oh, hey, wait, wait a minute. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. Now you stay right there, Sonny, and wait for Santa Claus. We don't want to miss it. Oh, come on, let me down. It's going to... How do you like that little monkey getting up while we're asleep and filling our socks? He just forgot to grow up. Where's he now? Someone called him on the phone. Look, I, I gotta go down to the Thayer Hotel. Somebody wants to see me. Come on, fellas, walk down with me, will you? We can make it before dental formation. Who is it? I don't know. It, it's a woman's voice. A woman? We'd better go with it. We ought to investigate this business of Sonny talking to strange women over the telephone. Merry Christmas, Jack. Some fun, eh? Merry Christmas, Dynamite. What did Santa Claus bring you? Oh, lots of things. Thanks, Jim. Merry Christmas. Right. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, Drew. Merry Christmas. Well, at least it's Christmas. They can't play around with that. Sonny! Uh -huh. Oh, uh, fellas, this is my mother and, and my father. This is Steve Early and, and this is John West. Oh, Mr. Early, I'm so glad to meet you. Sonny has written me all about your practicing to be a diplomat. Oh, I just adore kings, don't you? I don't know. I never met one. Oh, well, that's just what I like about them. They're so exclusive. Oh, anybody can meet the president. Well, well, you look fit as a fiddle. How they treat you? Oh, swell, Dad. Good. Uh, let's eat. Huh? Yes, surely. Oh, you know, I can't get over how he looks in the uniform. Isn't he beautiful? Come on, Mama. Come on, Mama. Come on, Mama. Come on, Mama. These are the guys who didn't believe in Santa Claus. <laughs> it was Sonny's idea, John. He knew we were coming for Christmas, so he insisted that we bring your mother. <laughs> We'd have brought your father, too, only I'm such a poor sailor. Oh, isn't it thoughtful of them to have a splendid hotel like this right on the grounds just so we mothers can visit our son? Well, come on, let's eat, huh? Oh, yes. You sit right there. Yes. Oh, All right, son, oh, we're with mother. Steve, sit right there. Oh, 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 don't anybody disturb me for the next half hour. Oh, well, then, you know, as soon as I get home, I'm going to send you a nice hotel. Oh, but look, darling, you're not picking anything up, please. please. Oh, ma. Gee, for a minute there, I thought it had me licked. <laughs> <laughs> Say, what's the matter, Duke? Oh, I. I think I need a little fresh air. Do you mind? I know Sonny's just dying to tell you all about the army. Oh, not at all, Stephen. <laughs> you know, darling, just as soon as we get it, I'm going to get a nice chocolate piece for you, and I'm going to send it to you. <laughs> Do you get nice food here? Oh, sure, we get nice food. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't mind, Steve, Stephen, I, I want to have a talk with you. No, of course not. You know, I feel as though I've known you always. John has written to me so much about you. I'm sure it must have been very uninteresting. I'm so glad he found someone like you here. He's had so few friends. You'll never know what you've done for him, Stephen. What it's meant for him to stay here. He never knew his father. He never even saw him. He's just dreamed. And ever since he's been a little bit of a boy, he's marched towards that dream. It's Christmas. I wish you'd let me tell him, Stephen. Oh, let's not tell him now, Mother West. He'd have queer ideas about paying me back. He might spoil things. I wouldn't have that happen for the world. God bless you, Stephen. And Merry Christmas.
cutting in, Mr. Strong. Thank you. Thank you. I had a great desire to look at you and say Merry Christmas. Do you mind? No, I don't mind. Merry Christmas, Steve. What made you decide to deliver your Christmas greeting in person? Oh, maybe it's because I'm sending so few this year. Thank you. Merry Christmas, Mr. Strong. Coach, it's the best-looking plebe squad in years. My doc, that's what you said about last year's plebe. Did I? Coach, can I talk to you? What is it? Sir, I understand a man's place upon any army team depends entirely upon his ability as a player. That's correct, Mr. Early. Sir, I'd like to offer myself as a candidate for the plebe hockey squad. Probably no, sir. I am socially unacceptable to the corps. However, I don't think it will interfere with my ability as a player. In fact, it may have the opposite effect. Hockey is not entirely a pleasant pastime, Mr. Early. I understand, sir. Any man eligible for the sport has a right to try for a place in the team. Yes, sir. Doc, issue Mr. Early hockey equipment. Yes, sir. The train will take care of you, Mr. Early. Thank you, sir. In case of accident or sudden death, don't bother. Are you sure those skates fit? Have your attention, please, men. Gentlemen, a season without a defeat brings a glow to the heart of any coach and a regret that the last game has been played. I look forward to next season with keen anticipation. I believe the Army will be represented by its greatest squad. To those men on this squad who have borne the brunt of the battle and shared little of the glory, I can only say if it hadn't been for you, there would have been no glory for anyone. The Athletic Association has permitted me the pleasure of bestowing class numerals on members of this squad who have earned them. As your names are called, will you please step forward and take your certificate? Wes, John. Johnson, Charles W. Early, Stephen. Thank you, sir. Uh, Shannon, Jack. Hey, listen, who's top of the class? You are, you are. All right, I intend to stay there. Boy, just one more hour and we'll be yearlings. Gee, I can hardly wait. Hey, hey, listen to this. Suck in that stomach. Pull in that chin. What's your name, mister? I've been practicing it myself. Don't worry, I'll keep it a secret. Uh, gee, we march back right after graduation parade into the area. The whole corps. And then we won't be plebes anymore. We'll be recognized. For what? For what? Oh, stop riding him, Duke. I feel the same way he does. You know, we put in a tough year here trying to prove that we can make the grade. And then some upperclassman comes up and looks at you and sticks out his hand. And somehow it's like... It's like, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Yeah. That goes for me, too, fellas. Only multiply by 20. Twenty years, the whole early family has been waiting for the day. Well, come on, you better shake a leg. This is one for me, and we don't want to.
Should we go? Where are you two going? Class dinner and fair in the open under the tree. Dinner? We're doing six o'clock. You don't know my classmates. Will you be terribly angry if I don't go? Why, I. Please. You won't mind, will you, Dad? No, I won't mind. You want to come to class dinner with me, Doc? We're going to have three kinds of ice cream. Hello, soldier. Hello. How did you get here? Didn't I see you in the area? I followed you. It took a short time. How does it feel to be a Yenig? I wouldn't know. Well, at least you're making use of the privileges. Usually the first time a new yearling explores rotation walk, he has company. Not my kind of yearling. Even your kind of yearling should make some concession to tradition. You saw what happened to me at recognition. It hurt. If only one of them had stepped up to me. Violence in business was all very funny to begin with. It even amused me at first. But it got pretty terrible, like something crawling under your skin. I made up my mind I'd show the whole court that they were wrong about me. I worked my head off, played my head off, hoping that today at recognition they might call it quits, but they didn't. The funny thing is, I, I don't hate them and I'm not mad at them. They're only giving me what I deserve. Only... I wouldn't have hurt so much if I hadn't been trying. There's an old, old tradition connected with this rock. There seems to be an old, old tradition connected with everything in this place. They say that if a cadet is refused a kiss under here, the rock will fall and after it, the whole mountain. It's a fairy tale, I guess. For instance, I wouldn't dare run the risk of wrecking the whole of West Point. Sometimes little girls get awfully mixed up over very important emotions. And the one thing I don't need is pity. <laughs> started when the Canadians beat us the first time. They presented us with a cup and we've been trying to give it back to them ever since. This is the year. Sure. Football's a great game. It doesn't prove anything. So you play in the Notre Dame game. So what? We've beaten Notre Dame and everybody else, but we've never beaten the Canadians. I'd rather play on the team that gives the cup back to the Canadians and get a star in my sweater for beating Navy. You'll be perfectly safe. When the Redcoats come down here on Saturday, you'll be sitting on the bench, as usual. Oh, is that so? Well, how do you like this? 
Coates looked at me twice yesterday. Before the second black eye or after? Oh, well, wouldn't you be surprised if he called my name out for the varsity? It'd be a misprint. What? Uh, this will be the last practice before the Canadian game. I want you men to polish up on your dropway. And remember... Those red coats won't be impressed because we've beaten a few teams like Dartmouth, Cornell, and Harvard. And I want you forwards to remember this. On the breakaway, the center man has to drop the puck over the blue line and skate one defense man out of position. Come on, take your position. Come on. Coach are tougher than that. Hey, Drew, go up there and show Shannon how to play defense. Huh? I said go in at defense. You said defense, didn't you? That's what I said. That's all I want to know. Sent me in to show you how to play defense. We left a nice small spot for you on the bench. Come on, let's chase those guys off the ice. He didn't score, did he? No. Defense. That's me. I'd better get over there. Is he all right? I hope he's going to be all right. Could we just see him? Well, just for a moment. Thank you, sir. Some guys have all the luck. Imagine he doesn't have to play against the Canadians. I think he's a gold brick myself. Uh, what are you guys talking about? It's only Wednesday. Three whole days before Saturday. Suppose I'm going to stay here while you have all the fun handing back that cup, do you? You just take it easy, son. We'll take care of the cup. Gee, I... That Steve skates and dizzy. I don't mind, except that I just made the team, and it's like running out on the fellas when they need me. Why don't you guys get out of here? You want to miss your child? Gee, it's going to be funny having a room all by myself. what it costs to get in there? No, why? I have. Lots of times. It's the highest admission price in the world. 
You have to die to get in. I never thought of it like that. To me, it's... Well, it's something beautiful. Like parades and bands playing and flags flying. I've never been in. Now I'm going in for a reason. and all these pictures were classmates. Fellows like you and me, fellows like Drew. Maybe next week our class will have a meeting. I'll toss a few dollars into a hat to buy Sonny a nice little plaque for the walls. It won't mean a thing to Sonny. He won't be here to see it. And the class will go on as before. Mr. and Mrs. Drew will get a letter from the war department. Dear sir and madam, we are returning to you your son who broke his neck playing hockey for the army on his time. Maybe he won't die. Maybe he'll just lie in bed the rest of his life, eating his heart out. And his classmates who didn't break their necks will be graduated from here and scattered to the four corners of the earth. Maybe in time they'll become generals. But Sonny won't. He'll just be a classmate who didn't keep in step. That's his reward for being a true son of the black, gray, and gold. That's why I'm getting out of here. That's why what? Oh, yes, I'm going to resign. But before I do, I wanted to come up and get acquainted with all the sunnies around the walls. I wanted to prove to myself how empty glory can be and what a poor price is paid for that good old army spirit. Sonny didn't ask much of this place. Just to be one of the gang. Neither one of us made it. The one thing that Sonny wanted most was to beat the Canadians. I kept thinking of that all the time we were saying hello to the Canadian team. And then later, when we showed our Canadians to the room to sleep in Sonny's bed, I kept thinking of how he'd waited two years for today. I kept hearing him say, Defense, that's me. How he wanted to win this game. Oh, I know it may sound silly coming from me, but when I go out to play against those red coats, I'm not going to be thinking of the tradition or the glory or the excitement. I'm going to be thinking of Sonny Drew. If ever a man on an army team tried to win, I'm going to try. Not for the army, but for Sonny. At least the kid has that much coming to him. When it's over, I'm getting out of here. Things have been pretty tough on you, Steve. Gee, there were times when I didn't see how you could take it and keep coming back for more. A man could take a lot when he wants something badly enough. Hello, Steve. I, uh, I often come and look at this place. There's nobody else around. I, uh, I kind of heard what you said. You know, Steve, they tossed me out of here. I felt pretty bad about it. I was a whole lot like you. The four-letter man in sports. Filled up to here with the good old army spirit. And they threw me out because I neglected Euclid for Rockney. It hurt. But I told myself that I didn't care. If the army didn't want me, I didn't want the army. But I didn't want any part of a service that could treat me that way. But I was wrong. This place does something to you, Steve. It's down inside of you. It's like, well, it's like a kind of an ache in the middle of your chest. You never get rid of it. I guess that's why I've come back here 
year after year. Watch each class come in and go out. It's made that ache just a little easier. Oh, you'll have it, too. No matter where you go or what you do. Because this place gets in your blood. It's part of you. Whether you want it to be or not. There's one thing I found out about this place, Steve. No matter how tough the going has been, if you've been honest in your heart, just when you think you can't take any more, something happens. Steve, and the best of luck to you, too. Well, uh, we, uh, we better hurry. I don't want to be in the dressing room. Why aren't you inside? I was waiting for you. Is Sonny any better? Nobody knows. I'm glad you're here. After tonight, you'll be able to write the end to the personal history of Steve Early at West Point. The end? Mm -hmm. This is the last performance of our young hero. In an army uniform, I'm getting out. You mean you're giving up? That's what I mean. Sorry, Steve. I shan't even try to change your mind. I know how hard you've tried. Thank you. Do you remember long ago when I had a birthday? You said that if you ever had to leave here, that you'd let your hair grow in and we'd go back to England? I remember. I'm sure I'd love England. Hey, you better hurry. You're late. Don't worry, I won't be late. Not for this game. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to bring to you the 16th annual hockey game between the Royal Military College of Kingston, Ontario, Canada, and the United States Corps of Cadets of West Point. Tonight, tradition and sportsmanship of the highest type will unfold itself on the glassy surface of perfect ice. These two teams have met 15 times before tonight. And 15 times, the gentlemen cadets of the Royal Military College have defeated the sons of the Army Black, Gray, and Gold. 15 times. These two teams have fought each other like wildcats. And during those games, no penalty has ever been called on any man on either side. Now that record, ladies and gentlemen, stands alone in the annals of highest sportsmanship. As usual, the Corps of Cadets is divided into two parts, one of which is yelling for the Royal Military College victory and meeting. Now there's a few minutes gone, and the teams are assembling for final instructions on the ice. The first string army line, ladies and gentlemen, will begin the game. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I, I don't see Steve Early. Why, Early, Army's greatest hockey player in years, is on the bench. Bell is in there at left wing. Oh, oh yeah. Trust that candy Scott McDonald, Army's coach, to have one up his sleeve. I believe Mac is going to test that Canadian defense before he sends Early into action. All right, now. Strong number four and Taylor number five are in position for the faceoff. Referee drops the puck, and there they go. Strong gets the puck to Miller, who breaks down the ice, but loses it to Ross, the Canadian star. Ross passes back to Taylor, who is still handling toward the Army goal. Strong comes from nowhere and takes the puck from Taylor and is speeding down the ice. They throw in defense to the winds. Five men are down the ice attacking the Canadian goal, and five forwards mean suicide or success. They shoot. As a scramble, Taylor number five from Canada takes the puck. He's speeding like a madman. It's a breakaway. Ladies and gentlemen, the score in the first minute of the Army RMC game is Royal Military College 1, Army nothing. And what a match. The Canadian section is cheering like madmen. I see McDonald, the Army coach in the bench, with a very worried look. Maybe the Army will change its tactics. Now the referee has the puck. The two centers are facing each other. The referee drops the puck. Brown takes it. He's speeding into a pack of Canadians, but loses the puck. There's the pass to Taylor. He's breaking down the ice, turning on the goal. They're going into an Army defense. West makes a beautiful switch. 
sweet check, comes up with the puck, and is away from the Canadian goal. West passes to Strong. Again, Arnold puts on the power play. Five Army men go down the ice in another desperate attack. They're skating furiously. Strong attempts to bow, who shoots the puck. This is. There's a mad scramble. The Canadians have broken Army's power play. Taylor takes the puck. He breaks away again. He whirls toward the sideboard. He comes around Val and Shannon. The whole Army team is chasing him. Again, there's nobody between him and the Army goal. He breaks to the right. Pulls the Army goal. the game, it looks like McDonald's strategy is backfiring on the army, because he overlooked a truly great RMC star by the name of Taylor, who wears the number five on the jersey. Now the army team is skating back to the center ice. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. An army substitution. Any instructions, sir? No instructions, Ernie. Thank you. It's Drew. Robert Drew. Wait a minute. It couldn't be Drew. Drew's the boy who was hurt in practice. It's early, Steve Early. He's coming into the game, and he's wearing Drew's number eight on his jersey. McDonald, the West Point coach, is playing his ace, Steve Early. The early attack is now made up with Early at left wing, Strong at center, Miller at right, and now we're just about ready. There's the whistle. The teams take their positions. Referee drops the puck. Strong passes back. Early has it. Here he comes. He turns. He's too much for Taylor. They're skating him fast on the Canadian defense. They're like wild men. Early in possession of the puck. He's closely checked by Taylor. He spins to avoid Taylor's poke check. He fakes the pass to Strong. He spins again to remove the Canadian forward. Again, he slides in the bench with the jump. He's not shooting. 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 He's the most sensational skating these eyes have seen this season or any other season has apparently been missed by the West Point cheering section. The centers facing each other. The referee tops the puck. Taylor takes the puck in the face off. He bats it to Willard and returns it to Taylor. Taylor takes a long shot from the blue line. But Johnson clears it nicely and the puck goes to Shannon. The stubborn Canadian forward sweeps in the check. Now there's a skill. It's Shannon Strong now who breaks down center ice, takes a pass, and Taylor slides hopelessly behind him. He charges viciously into the Canadian defense, shoots, and it's good. Good. Nice going, Mr. Strong. All right, all set to go once more. Early has the puck. He's fighting his way through two Canadian forwards against the sideboard. Charging through the whole Canadian team. Here comes the center. He shifts quickly. Still in possession of that puck. If you can still hear me, ladies and gentlemen, we're in the closing moments of the West Point Royal Military College hockey game. If West Point is to win, they must win now. Because only seconds remain, and the superior team strength of the Canadians will triumph in an overtime period, and that cup will again rest in West Point's keeping. The only cup that the losers hold. Taylor has the puck. He's headed for the Army goal. They spin hard in front of the cage. He must be a rubber man. That's the 16th time he's been down to that. Charlie again. Out of nowhere, he steals the puck. He hurdles the forward, attempting to poke check. But Taylor, Taylor steals the puck from early. He's charging fast. seconds left in this game of chills and spills. Both teams have thrown orthodox hockey to the winds. It's a personal duel between Taylor and Early. Taylor is checking Early very closely. They call Early the Duke of West Point. But tonight he's forgotten his scratch and umbrella when he's carrying a stick, a hockey stick. Early breaks away. He spins. Passes to strong. Returns the pass to Early. He's half caught. And his shot is wide. Both teams play straight. seconds remaining in this game. Fifteen seconds, the difference between defeat and victory for either team. Oh, this is glorious. This is insanity. But it's not hockey. Early has the puck. The jump. He's going to pass. No, he carries. It's a terrific crash. Three men are down on the ice. The street, they push it around their head. Now, early comes to the Canadian team alone. He beat the forward. He stops the center. He's coming into the defense. He shoots. He lets the puck fly and throws it through his body. He's in the net. Ladies and gentlemen, and he scores. It's a score. Ladies and gentlemen, 
ending the most sensational hockey game ever played on this high. And if you don't, uh, here goes me. Hi, Jack. This came for you after I left the hospital. I brought it along myself. The mail must go. Thanks. From home. Mother just after the battle, eh? Yep, twice a week. Wednesdays and Saturdays. No, you go ahead. I'll tell you right up. Right, I'll wait outside. Strong, I'd like to show you something. This was enclosed. date and time on that telegram. Well, that's the night he broke limits. And I reported him. That's right. He went to town that night to send this money to my mother. That's why I'm here. And when you caught him, he told a lie. Not to save himself, but to save me, because he knew I wouldn't have taken the money. Why, but for over a year, I've been living on Steve's heartache. I'm going to do something about this, and right now, I'd consider it a personal favor if you let me handle this. Mr. Early. Will you follow me, please? Certainly. Why not? Front and center, Mr. Early. Remove your right glove, please. Mr. Early, a deliberate oversight on the part of the Corps occurred at recognition last year. A man was punished. The Corps discovered that he was punished for the offense of saving the service life of his classmate. I'm glad to know you, Steve. Thank you, sir. Do you mind if I introduce myself? My name is Strong. Nice going, Duke. Dismiss! Yeah! Mr. Drew, may I present Mr. Albright, the captain of the Canadian team? Hello. If Mr. Drew had been able to play defense, we never would have scored that goal.
Yes, yeah, Sonny. Give him back the cup. You don't mind, do you? It's an honor. Yeah, I brought this for you to put under your pillow. It's caught against Canada. Oh, gee, Duke, that's great. Now, don't get excited, I... Sonny. Who's getting it? drop in the class before I can qualify as a doughboy. I thought diplomacy was your dish. Haven't you heard? The doughboy is the backbone of the service. Oh, that's great, Duke. Now we can all be in the same outfit. My father can fix that easy. He met a senator once. Please, Mr. Drew, don't get excited. Who's excited? I'm not excited. Always telling me I'm excited. Everybody tells me I'm excited. Get excited if I want to get excited, if I and I want to get excited. Besides, I never get excited. something wrong? Hmm? I've had a quotation running through my head for months. Who is it who said, you're fresh, conceited, a gold brick, and an army brat? I think it's a direct quotation from Anne Porter. Yes. Chapter one, volume one, of the personal history of Stephen Early, wasn't it? Yes. I hope you're revising the second edition. Yes, yes, I'm eliminating the army brat. Army brat? What else? Well, gold brick. And? Fresh. Conceited. That's better. Oh, I brought you something. That's the beginning of volume two of the personal history of Steve Early at West Point. make such nice reading for us on those long winter nights.